Hey guys, Brody here with Squids Pressure Washing LLC, Kansas City's highest rated pressure washing service. Um, I promised a video to a handful of the people on the PWRA forum, Pressure Washing Resource Association, uh, on how to wire in a ball valve for a remote downstream injector system. So the wiring you're gonna see here, I'm gonna move through, but you're gonna see it a handful of times. This is gonna show you what the board looks like as far as where the inputs go. But at the end of it, I'll have a, uh, at the end of the video, I'll have an actual wiring diagram, but it'll all make sense as I move through the video. So this remote here is a long range remote, which I actually use on my system and it works awesome. This remote I got will not pair with the receiver. So it's been 50-50 and I'll add the link below that way you can take a look at the two options but you see the difference in the um, wiring instructions and diagrams. One was printed on paper is not correct. The other remote that I'm actually wiring this to the instructions that came with it were awesome and it actually had uh, a section on it for wiring in motors. You're going to notice here that this ball valve is way too big for a downstream injector. The wiring and the motor are the same. It's just the stainless steel ball valve that's different. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the reason I'm wiring in this giant ball valve is because I don't have good luck with Hudson float valves. So I need to be able to turn off water to the tank from a distance. And that's what this big valve is for. And right now, I'm just trying to figure out some wiring connections to wire in an indicator light that lets me know that the ball valve is off from a distance. And at the end of this, you'll see how that gets wired in as well. Now these US solid valves are really inexpensive. And I'll put a link to this big one and the small ones you need for a downstream injector in the description below. But I have everything set up on indicator lights so I know what's going on. And they're small LEDs, but they're bright. You can see them in broad daylight from a distance, which is really nice. The other thing I like about these cheap US salad valves is that to replace the actual valve, if you're running SH or bleach or any other kind of corrosive soap through it, and the valve goes bad, you can buy another one of these valves with a spare motor on it, an assembly just like this, and swap out just the valve with four small screws, which is also super nice and handy, because now you got an extra motor if the valve gets stuck and it swaps out lightning fast. I'm gonna show you in just a minute how my downstream injector setup uh, is built and waterproofed and mounted, but there's two valves on mine and in retrospect, I probably overcomplicated it. And I'll show you a diagram at the end on what I would have done had I known better when I initially built the downstream injector system or the remote downstream injector system, which again works awesome. I don't know what I did without it. And I think I bumped my head here soon and the camera starts to shake violently. But um, right now I'm just showing you guys that the valve does open and close via remote. I'm not messing with anything. And it's super simple to wire. You'll need a 12 volt battery on hand. And if you have the Milwaukee 12 volt system or any others, you can just put small spade connectors on the end of um, your test wires because this is just to make sure everything works. 
you're obviously going to have to run longer wires to a battery. You're going to have to set up your wiring for uh, however you mount your US solid valve and your remote receiver. Again, I chose waterproof box. On this large valve, I'll actually just mount the valve itself directly to the reel on the outlet side. It's big enough. Uh, it's NPT threads. I won't have any problem adapting this just to the reel, but this remote receiver will get moved to a box, uh, likely the same waterproof box you guys will see in a minute. Um, so the wiring is going to have to be longer, but this is just to show you guys how it's done. And right now, I am program excuse me programming the remote which is a super simple process according to the new instructions. The instructions that come with the long range remote aren't that good. So it's almost worth buying the long range remote to see if it works and this remote, which has a decent range. I'm not complaining about the, rem the range of this remote. The instructions are just a lot better and it functioned right out of the box. The receivers are identical, same um, relays, those little blue boxes, relays are essentially just switches, same exact relays, same exact board, same exact wiring, um, same exact terminal connections. I think the receivers are identical. It's just the black remotes tend to be a little more reliable than the white ones so far in my limited experience. Two remotes doesn't make a great sample size. However, one of the white long range remotes works great. The other one will not pair. I tried 50 times. But again, they're so cheap, it may be worth buying the black and the white remote. The only difference is the range. You get a lot more range out of the white ones. So to program the remote, I won't go over that because again, it's in the instructions and super simple to do. Just know that before you try to program in a new setting, you have to clear the computer every time. And to do that, you just hold down the program button until it turns red. You hold it. When the green light comes back on, you let go of the button. In order to program, there's I think three or four different settings. You hold down the program button and you continue to hold it until the red and green light flashes one time, two times, or three times, depending on the mode and the setting that you want. I want toggle. I wanna to be able to open with one button and close with another. So for that, it flashes once green, flashes once red, and here I'm just showing you the downstream injector setup that I use with the long range remote. The waterproof box actually has a volt meter in it, battery indicator, which just goes to the red and black wire of your battery. There's just two wires, super simple to set up, tells you the status of the battery. And on the bottom of the box, I sanded both sides, scuffed both sides of the motorized valve in the box and used extreme duty outdoor double-sided tape to mount them and have not had a problem. Works great. I've got the 12 volt pump wired into it as well. The antenna I just ran out the side and taped up with some aluminum tape. Here's some pictures if you guys want to pause the video to take a look at the wiring. And here's the four screws I was telling you about. Now, if you want to pause this, this will show you the um, uh, wiring diagram as well as the um, 
way I would have run the remote downstream injector had I done it differently the first time. And that's literally one motorized ball valve, a stainless steel three-way valve, and that's just to run fresh water through the single motorized.